everybody, and welcome to Hearts in Drama Land. Hello. I'm Makia. I'm Ashley. We're sisters, and we are addicted to Asian dramas and music. Um, This will be a podcast. I don't know how often we'll do this, because yeah. we kind of only have our own work schedules. Um, We will discuss dramas, movies, K-pop, K-hip-hop. Uh, my sister watches mainly a lot of Chinese and Taiwanese dramas as well. I kind of stick to Korean dramas and K-pop. So we kind of, us together, will bring a discussion of everything. Right, right, right. So I guess we can start off with how we got into this. My sister actually started way before I did, so I'll let her say how she started. Yeah, um, back when I was in high school, I actually took driver's ed. And back then, you could get, like, a discount on your insurance for that. Never worked. But um, I had a, a girl I met there, and she wrote a list of dramas to watch. And I was just like, what is this? She's like, don't worry about it. Just look them up and watch them. And I was like, ugh, what is this? Okay, so I looked them up, and I was like, what is this? Are these Hispanic people? No, they're Asian. And so I started watching one of the dramas, and I was like, wow, this is actually really good. And so I went back to him and I was like, give me more, please. And the funny thing is, at this time, I caught her watching some of them. And I'm like, you're watching stuff with subtitles? Uh, yeah, subtitles. Whatever. Never watching anything with subtitles. <laughs> Didn't really care for it. Um, And that was it for you, basically. Yeah, after that, I just kind of watched one after the other. I didn't watch it religiously like I do now. But back then, I, everyone, every once in a while, I would pick up an episode or a new drama. So... That's kind of how I got into it, really. Right, and then fast forward to me when I was in college. By this time, Hulu is up, and it's recommending me to watch Boys Over Flowers yeah. and Coffee Prince, the initial dramas that usually get people into K-dramas. Right, right. I don't know why I play, play for some odd reason, because like I said earlier, I made fun of my sister for watching dramas with subtitles ah. when she was in high school. <laughs> I clicked play on the first episode of Coffee Prince, and I fell in love. It was, oh my gosh. I was like, what is this? And Coffee Prince is kind of that gateway drama for a lot of people, at least international fans, because it has the typical K-drama stereotypes, right. but it also, at that time, kind of went out of the box of a typical K-drama. Coffee Prince is a drama that was 17 episodes, I think. Was it? I think 16 so is long ago. Right. 16 and 17 episodes. I think K- Coffee Prince came out in 2007. And it Dang, dealt with you remember the. Remember the year and everything? Yes, girl. I cannot. Coffee Prince is my go to drama that I would recommend for anybody to watch. And it deals with the storyline of the female lead dressing like a boy, coming off as a boy. And the male lead doesn't know that she's a female lead. And he starts to fall for her in that process. I would say, though, if you want to start K-dramas, start off with Coffee Prince because it kind of gives you the plastic feel of how K-dramas are and then work your way up to watching newer ones. A lot of newer fans, I feel like, they start off with the newer dramas and can't appreciate the cliches of how initial K-dramas were. Right, or they start the new dramas and then they go back to see, oh, what everybody's watching back then. They're like, oh, it's so popular. And then they watch and they're like, oh, this is crap. Right, K-dramas have gotten so much better, I would say, in the last... Four to five years? Yeah. When I started, I started watching the older K-dramas that I wasn't into watching the airing ones. I kind of like to marathon through. Right. So my first probably year and a half or so, I was watching just nothing but the old dramas. Nothing that actually was airing at the time. Um, I didn't really expand into new ones until me and my sister started watching dramas together. Because mm. by then, I started watching the ones that were currently airing. And I'm kind of at that point now where I pay more attention to currently airing dramas than ones that I've already finished. Yeah, I prefer, I used to be like that. At one point, I was watching like five airing dramas. That was tiring. To try and keep up with all the dramas airing at once. And ones that you like more than the others, you'll watch them first. And then after that, you're like, Ugh, do I really want to go and watch this new episode of, you know, whatever drama it was. So, um... I prefer to marathon dramas now because it just gives me the feel. If I really like it, I can keep going and keep going till I'm done. And if I don't like it, nah, I'll just put it to the side. Maybe I'll come back. And I kind of appreciate that still. I kind of really went through that phase where I stopped. But then toward the end of last year, I kind of got so overwhelmed with all the current airing dramas that I kind of got 
a drama fatigue. Trust me, if you're addicted to K-dramas, you know what drama fatigue right. is. Right. Drama fatigue really No matter how much you, you love the dramas, you just, you're so overwhelmed, you can't fully get into it like you normally would. Right. And that's where I put in my anime, my American shows, or anything else that might help me get over it. Kind of like a filter, something that's just like... Taking a vacation from the K dramas or Asian dramas altogether right. and doing something else, right, and right, then right. when you're sick of something else, the the anime or whatever, you're like, oh, let me go see what K dramas up now. Let me go see, you know, who's doing something X, Y, and Z. You know, right? And I'm trying to get to that phase now where I learn how to balance out, because I kind of went completely over the deep end when I got into K dramas. I kind of let go of my American shows for the most part. I don't really even keep up with them anymore at this point. I fully intend to maybe go back one day. But at this point, I think I still only have somewhat interest in maybe two shows. Any show that I kind of got into after I got into K-dramas, I was more than willing to drop them after that. Mm. But I have maybe two shows that I were into a whole lot before I got into K-dramas. And I feel like they're most of them are kind of on their end run. When they get their end run and they're up on Netflix, I might go back and just marathon whatever I've missed. But I'm kind of at that point now where dramas kind of, they've kind of set a standard for me when it comes to entertainment when I watch shows. So when I go into American shows now, a lot of times I'm just like, mm, I don't know. It's not, <laughs> not really hitting it like right. I want to. I think I'm a pass Right. Um, K-dramas or Asian j- dramas in general do romance on a different level than American shows. Yeah. And I think that's what... A lot of people, I guess, romantics at heart can appreciate. Like, American shows kind of are quick to, oh, let's go have sex, let's get married, let's do this, let's do that. And they have nothing in between to see the fall in love process, the awkwardness of feelings fluttering and all that stuff, everything starting. And that's what dramas do for me. You get that moments of, oh my gosh. He's all of a sudden appealing. (laughs) Oh my gosh, he touched my hand. It may seem so high school. It may seem so high school, but for romantics, that stuff like that, that's what goes through most people's head. Even if you're an adult, I don't care how old you are. If you're into somebody, the first time they're in your space or they touch your hand or that first kiss you get from them, you're going to react like a high schooler. Mm. I feel like if you genuinely love that person, it's not an infatuation. And that's what dramas do. They give you genuine love and not infatuations all the time. Yeah. And I think the culture, too, from Asian dramas and Asia in general is so different from the Western, what we're used to growing up with and how we perceive marriage and love and all that kind of stuff. It's different. So it's good to see that different aspect, you know, from a culture that we aren't familiar with. Right, right. And so we are seeing that in the dramas in different versions with different characters and their traits. So it really brings something else out, I guess, when you're watching it. You get a different feel. Granted, there are... American shows, of course, that give a different feel, but I, I think those are going for out of the box right. uh, ideas and not necessarily romance and all right, that kind of stuff. Right, right. The romance is usually in the background, where in K dramas are, I guess, Asian dramas all together. Most of them have the romance in the forefront. Right, you're that's very, the main story. Right, you very rarely find a K drama or any other Asian drama in general. That doesn't have a romance somewhere in the plot. Right. Granted, there are plenty of good ones. Trust me, there are plenty of good dramas that don't have any romance. Like, there's one that I've actually told my sister to watch. She hasn't watched yet. If you haven't watched it, it's Signal. It came out last year around this time. I think it had finished its run by this time last year. It is a... Dang, is that old? Yes, it's already been a year. It's a 16-episode... Um, suspenseful cop drama which deals with not necessarily time travel but the a past case and a present case being connected mm. um, and it doesn't deal with romance at all but that drama kept me on the edge of my seat with every episode all the way to the end and I loved it and I barely rarely get into dramas that don't deal with romance because like I said I'm a romantic at heart so any romantic comedy I'm always going for more so than a cop drama or a medical drama. Right. So. And I think that brings us into um, what we're currently watching. Right. So, currently, I'm watching a Chinese drama. I do enjoy K- uh, Korean dramas, of course, but I started out with Taiwanese dramas. And so, I've watched 
more Taiwanese dramas in the beginning than Korean dramas. But then Korean dramas caught me, and I was just like, oh, wow, this is kind of different, you know? They're shorter than Taiwanese, because they can drag on an hour and a half for one episode. <laughs> right. And then, you know, the, I don't know, the culture's different, too, so. Right. But right now, I'm watching this Chinese drama called Eternal Love, or Ten Miles of Peach Blossoms. Please drop peach blossom trees. Anyway, Eternal Love. And it is amazing. I don't know. Like, I just finished General and I, which is another Chinese drama with the same type of concept of a historical look, but it's not a historical story. Um, and it span Eternal Love spans three lifetimes of this couple. And um, I guess their journey to the end of will they be together or not. So I'm really enjoying it. If you're watching this, let me know in the comments what you think about it because... I really need somebody to talk to about this. All right. Um, I am not into Chinese dramas as much. I've only finished one, working on my second one. <laughs> um, I do catch her watching this drama from time to time. I do find myself getting pulled into the scenes just for the pure beauty of it. That's the right, one thing right. I can give for Chinese dramas, especially the historical ones. They always look so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I even, I even love that about K-dramas as well. I love historical dramas because of the look the feel of everything it's just it's so much brighter and prettier for some odd reason when they do historical dramas mm. and i've caught a few scenes here and there she kind of has to explain the story to me here and there super I complicated at first it is <laughs> um i haven't i won't say i will go into watching it but it's not something i wouldn't mind sitting down to watch with her a few minutes here and there uh, because i'm not into fully chinese dramas i guess that's why i can't say i will commit to saying i will watch it but I will say from what I've seen, it's interesting. So, hey, give it a try. I'm actually currently watching Strong Woman Do Bong Soon, which started two weeks ago. Um, it airs Fridays and Saturdays. It's, I think Vicky and Drama Fever have it. Um, so it's not an exclusive. They don't have that stamp on it. You can't watch this until six weeks later. Right. Drama Fever tends to do that, which Hate is annoying. <laughs> which is annoying. And Vicky does that too, but I have paid them I have paid membership for both. So it doesn't really affect me as much. But I like comments on Vicky. So I like when Vicky gets them. Right. But I don't care for the subs on Drama Fever because they're right. too they're kind of lazy subtitles. Right, like, lazy and Americanized. They don't really kind of translate like how, I don't know how Asians really portray their words. Right. The meaning behind them isn't portrayed in the drama fever version. Right. They do the roundabout description of it and not... Kind of like, uh, you get what we're trying to right. say. Right. Basically. And I'm like, no. And I'm learning the Korean language, so I can kind of tell when the subs are kind of not really concrete. So I'm like, uh, no, he didn't quite say that, but okay, <laughs> if you say so. And it gives less feeling to it. Right. Or like there's parts where they don't sub a conversation, like part of the conversation, and they just go to the next person what they're saying. I'm just like, wait a minute, what? Right, she said like three other lines after <laughs> right. that. Why was the sub only two words? Where's the rest of it? Right. It's kind of Like she's like, I walked down the street and I saw him on the side. Then uh, Drum Fever is just like, oh, she saw him on the side of the road. Right. No. <laughs> Were you driving? Were right. You Come on, drama fever. Right. So with that, but strong woman Doom Bong Soon deals with Park Bong Young's character, who is a super strong petite girl, and she's hired as a bodyguard for Park Hong Sik, who was just. I thought she's about to cut. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how to pronounce his the. I guess you could say the middle name because how Koreans do their name. Um, is it S H I K? It's S I K. S I K. -sick. But it, but you can find it S H I K depending on which website you're looking at. There's rappers that have like a name S I C or S I K, and it's right. usually I just pronounce it sick because that's what it looks like. Right, and mm -hmm. I guess because I know how I'm learning the letters, so I for the most part I know how it is. But it's still kind of with the Korean. Korean language, depending on what letter it is, it could be pronounced with either a K or a G for that, mm. but I'm guessing it's K. It's just, I don't know where S and SH in the Korean language is still, right, it's still kind of different, right. so, but anyway, um, she is hired to be his bodyguard, and it deals with this mysterious killer, which is, 
I'm thinking I'm coming to them as drama for a romantic comedy with a few quirks here and there. She's his bodyguard? She's his bodyguard. But at the end of episode two, they show this serial killer who's really, like, sick. Like, you think you're watching a completely different drama. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Whoops. Editing oops. It is right. another drama. Right. Like, did y'all mix up some scenes or something? <laughs> but I can appreciate it. I will say, though, because I haven't watched this week's episodes yet, so I don't know if the editing got better. I will say the first episode, especially, editing was kind of choppy and a little all over. Not that you couldn't still understand where everything was going. It's just the scene flow was kind of off. Right, right. So it kind of was like, whoa. Kind of like uh, Scarlet Heart. Let's not get <laughs> the Korean version. Was it no, uh, no, no, Moon no. Lovers? Excuse me, Moon Lovers. Not the Korean version, the version that they gave to international fans. <laughs> because the SBS version was completely different and that had better a, scenes. That was a slap in the face. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, Strong Woman, ooh, excuse me, Strong Woman Doom Bong Soon is actually pretty interesting because it has a bromance. Some people are kind of finding it a little bit problematic because if Park on Chick's character has rumors going around about him that his character may be gay. He, I don't know if his character is playing up with it because of the rumors or he might actually legit be a character that's attracted to male and females. Do, do they do like a, um, hmm, moments where you're like, what right, he, was that? He has lines in the first two episodes, both that he says some stuff that kind of, you're like, whoa, did he just <laughs> say that? You realize you're talking about a male person, right? Yeah. And that's the thing with K-dramas. It's very rarely that you get a gay character. Mm. And if they are, they're usually either a side character where, and it's not necessarily mentioned that right. they're gay. <clears throat> so for this to actually kind of have him come off on that sense of him being attracted to males right. and that there's a rumor going around, going around that he's gay, I can appreciate that they're bringing the LGB to drama land. Right. But... If they're just using this as for kicks and to bring people in, then no, you're not doing any justice to the LGBT people. Right. You're kind of kind of throwing shade and fun at them by having someone, because he's able, able to say that a male is attractive, that, oh, he's just throwing jokes at somebody but like that. But there's a thing, that's a double standard, though, too, that they do. Because females can say, oh, she's beautiful, or right, she's gorgeous. Right. Or they have, like, I can't remember what drama it was, but the female lead was looking at the girl walking in, and it was looking at her lips, and right. it was her hips, and she's just like, oh, my God. No, that's competition right there. That's what right. she was thinking. But if they do the same with a the male, they're like, oh, he's gay. Right, right. And I don't know, I don't know, maybe when I watch this week's episodes, I can tell a little better. I have seen some posts on Tumblr that kind of feel like that Park and Shit's character may go in that sense of being kind of making fun of any bisexuals yeah. and me and as coming from a, somebody who is bisexual please do not use this as a way to make fun of us we always need positive light for bisexuals because we're already you looked at, at upon as greedy or we can't make up our mind <laughs> type of thing so <laughs> right so if his character is genuinely into other people or he may just be that type of guy that is straight but is able to appreciate right. someone else, then I'm all for it. Right. Appreciate Go that ahead. nice body. Appreciate right. that nice face, right. her hair, her lips, whatever. So right. This reminds me of uh, Scarlet Heart 2. The Chinese, uh, I wish there was a Korean version. Chinese version. <clears throat> so in Scarlet Heart 2, the guy who plays the 10th brother in the first season is uh, the boss of the main girl in the second season. And he is fabulous. And I'm telling you, like, lip gloss is popping. <laughs> his lip gloss is popping. And he sways. And he uses his hands to talk. And I was just like, this dude is so flamboyant. It's not even funny. And so they were talking about him, too, behind his back about, you know, what's wrong with him. But then at the end, he has this, like, connection with one of the female uh, characters. And then they end up dating basically that's what right. happens and i'm just like whoa wait a minute so what happened to those first 20 something episodes where we thought he was gay? Right, that's right. what y'all threw at but then all of a sudden he wants a woman right and i had the same issue with which is romance i think was two or three years ago now mm -hmm. um because me and her talked about this before one of the guys he was another team lead in the office where the main female lead worked and he came off as super flamboyant. His voice pitch was high. <laughs> and everything. 
at the end of the drama in the last episode, they kind of hinted at him going on a date with the female and actually working this out. Right. Which is fine because there's probably are he some guys. He cured go- himself. Right. There's probably some guys out there that have high pitched voices and a little yeah. flamboyant, but they're completely straight, which is fine. But I feel like they gave his character so flamboyantness throughout the entire drama to throw that in at the end. It was like, oh no, he's not really gay. Or you guys just did that to not have anybody say anything. Who said you had to do anything about his relationship in the first place? He's right. not one of the main characters. So he didn't have to. I hate when the when they do that at the end of any drama. It doesn't matter right. if they're gay or not. They feel like they need to pair They have to up. force a relationship. Right. No. Some people just want to be single. Right. Can we be single? Can not I do me? Right. Not everybody needs to be in a relationship. And I just, I don't know. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't like that. In general, American eyes or dramas don't have a character come off as gay mm. and then throw that in at the end when the character's finished. Oh, no, they really weren't. Huh? <laughs> what? And as, as in, for me, for someone who's part of the LGBT community, I'm not, I don't want to read into stuff that's not there. Yeah. So don't portray someone that's not because for us, we look for anybody that's part of us that's part of the community so anybody that comes off that's part of the community of course we're going to root for them so when you throw that in at the end that they're not they're like that's a slap in the face to us thanks thanks a lot right yeah but um check out strong woman do bong soon and eternal love right chinese drama it's actually on drama fever two episodes monday through friday even though it's finished airing on march 1st there's still going to be like two weeks left from drama fever right. Strong Woman Doom Bong Soon is on both Vicky and Drama Fever. Drama Fever posts the videos, I think, usually by 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Right. Um, Vicky gets the episodes up the day of the same day, but they have to be subbed by right, fans. That's volunteer. So, Not but the- I can appreciate the, the subs for Vicky. I will, usually I pre-watch on Drama Fever and then go back for Vicky for comments. Right. Um, <clears throat> not that we're trying to advertise for Drama Fever or Vicky. Right. Because if you know a site that puts up the dramas, subbed or unsubbed raw. Go watch it there. Right. We're just saying where we watch it. Right. I watch it on these, because these are the websites that I started off with. Right. Every once in a while, I do have to gravitate to other websites because... Drama Fever or Vicky may not get it, or they may be behind on getting it. Right. So, and sometimes they don't necessarily announce what they're getting because sometimes the license may not even come until after the drama started airing. He's like, okay, I guess you can have it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, wherever you can find the website that has a drama, please watch it there. I mean, granted, I do prefer you guys to watch legal websites because a lot of websites seem to, I've noticed these days, are taking the videos with subs from right. other from legal websites and posting it up and acting like they're the ones that are doing the subs when they're not. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to get bypassed at all times, but if you know a website that is doing that, don't support them. Go find a website that will actually do the subs themselves. Or support them, and then when they get shut down, don't be upset. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to... If legal websites are getting shut down, especially in the recent years, right. left and right, because there's so many other more legal websites coming up now, so the illegal ones are getting shut down. Right, especially if they're using their uh, their content that they haven't actually worked for. Right. Or sometimes it's, you maybe you're overseas, you're in an area where that Vicky or John Fever, our legal website doesn't right. give you, and so the illegal websites... Take their content so that you can watch it. I mean, that's another way of doing it. We don't want to hate on anybody. Because, right. you know, it's can't knock nobody's hustle. Right. I'm all for anybody joining Drama Land. Please join Drama Land because this is so much entertainment and value in these things that are beyond American television and entertainment right. in general. Right. So, <clears throat> um, I guess we can start talking about a little about music because we both like K-hip-hop and K-pop as well. Right. Um, I usually I feel like once you're in the drama land it's usually a segue into K pop and K hip hop. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Because so if you're watching a drama, which like what happened to me? Oh, I like that song. Where can I find it? Mm-hmm. And then you'll get into drama oust or however you guys pronounce an original soundtrack <laughs> and O S T Oust, whatever. Um I got into I think what is it? What drama was it that I really got into? Heartstrings with Park Shanghai. Yeah. I love the music that they had in that because they mixed um, the historical Korean music, traditional Korean music with modern Korean rock music. Right. 
So I got into it that and then that segue into me finding because I was watching the videos for the soundtrack on YouTube. Big Bang popped up. Big old bang, a big bang. bang. And I clicked that. What was it? Bang, a bang, a I clicked Fantastic Baby, and it was all over from there. It was the Fantastic Baby was on Heartstrings. No, um, it reckon YouTube recommended me to watch Fantastic Baby because I was watching, um, fan videos for Heartstrings. Oh, okay. So, and I was like, cause, and I thought a little clip of it, and I was like, and I think it was Top with his blue hair, and I was like, who is this blue hair? And lo and behold, top my bias, pull me in. And from then, I think I watched, after I watched Fantastic Baby, then I watched Bad Boy. And from there, I've been into K-pop ever since. Mm, I think mine started back when I was, okay, so my first drama, Asian drama, was, it started with The Kiss, the Taiwanese version, which is the best version. Sorry, anybody else who wants to contradict Playful Kiss me, was crappy. Because <laughs> uh started with The Kiss, Taiwanese version was the freaking bomb. Um... And then my first K drama was Full House with Rain and Song Hai Go. Uh, so <clears throat> I became a fan of Rain first. I didn't really get into K pop. I just kind of followed him. And then I followed TVXQ. Hero was just like this gorgeous angel. I don't know what. <laughs> I was like, is he real? What is that? But um, so Rain, ugh, definitely. Granted, I don't listen to him as much now. But back then, um,. How to Avoid the Sun, and I don't know, it was some other songs, but that's like the main song that I remember really listening to, and so I watched his drama, and then I got into him through his music, so that's how I started K-pop, but then my sister introduced me to more K-pop, so it's been a while since I really, like, I guess, got into it, but I wasn't fully into it. Right. It was just here and there songs, so... Um, and Ashley actually pays more attention to K hip hop than I do. I kind of stick to the same artists for the most part than what I listen to. I try to expand my choices, but I'm kind of lazy when it comes to researching and looking up new people. So unless it kind of comes across my attention, it's kind of hard for me to go out there and try to find stuff. Right, right. Um, K hip hop for me, just because I've always liked hip hop music more than I guess the poppy music <clears throat> that's why I've got into it more so uh, let me see who's K hip hop uh, Epic High Epic High I guess was the first group that I got into for right, right. hip hop and then that was kind of like the gateway drug as you say <laughs> uh, and then there's there's K hip hop and there's K R and B but they're all kind of under the same mm, right genre because when you look up K hip hop you see people like Zion T and and Dean and all them right 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 so they kind of put them under the same umbrella so Zion T is definitely oh my god he is yes. amazing if I could see him live in concert bucket list yes bucket list That's, and it's funny I play my music when I'm my K pop music at work and the funny thing is. I've had people that kind of look at me sideways when because I listen to K-pop, but if I let them listen to say like Zion T or a Big Bang song or Epic High song, yeah. they're like, "Oh, this is yes." <laughs> not K-pop is not just all Gangnam Style. Not to hate Gangnam Style because I love Gangnam Style. Right. I love me some Psy, but there's so much more to K-pop and so much more to the to the to K-pop than the really poppy stuff. And I feel like a lot of people kind of think that K-pop is just super poppy, like how Britney Spears was in her yeah. early days, which is, there are groups like that, yeah. but there is more to it than that. And a lot of groups are kind of actually expanding, I guess, the genre and taste of music that they do because they realize they're gaining international fans. Okay. So, mm -hmm. like, Zion T just put out a new album. Um, I haven't fully listened to all of it, but what I have listened to, I love. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I uh, like his last album, even though I have to say, I'm not sure why, but I don't like it as much just because it's a shorter album. His last album, uh, I believe it was called Red Light, it was much, much longer. There's more songs. I don't know if it's because he just moved to uh, YG right, or not, and I don't want to blame YG. We, yeah, let's not blame YG. <laughs> he do do some shady stuff, but let's not blame him for everything. Right. Because Zion T is on YG, but he's under YG's sub label, so he's not directly right. linked to YG directly like that. And 
Zion T has his own powers that I don't think YG would affect. We're like, uh, uh-uh, I hear you that song. Right. Uh, no, YG. Right. I will put that song on that album. Right. So don't tell me. Right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, um, Zion T put out the album, and I like it. Even though it's shorter, I really do like it. He has his usual, um, uh, features, which is Benzino. Benzino, and I feel awesome. like all right, Benzino and Zion T going hand in hand. hand so right. if Benzino does an album, Zion T probably got to do a hook on something. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. And then he had his new label, made D Dragon do a song. Right, right. So I think that's good. They've done a song before, though. Right, together. but it was. Was it G Dragon? It was G Dragon's song. I think it was G Dragon's song that they did. It was Zion T's song. Right. So. <clears throat> and um, it has his usual. Um, Zion T has a way of mixing R&B and hip hop together right. to make this sound that is Zion T that everybody right. knows Zion T for. <laughs> and I'm S- signature. Right. And I I can honestly say for the most part, if I know he's about to drop some new stuff, it's going to be good. Right. It's going to be fire. So when I went and looked the album when it finally dropped, I was like, oh, this is it. That's it. Ugh. Right. Zion T. I want more. Right. You can't just give us a little bit. <laughs> but. Who's to say he might not drop something else or LP or even um, a single digital single, right? Because like he does that a lot, and I thought like all his last singles would be on there, like mm. Eat and uh, No Makeup, but those are just basically just singles, right? Alone. Right? Right? They're not. And that's another album. thing that's different to K. The Korean music industry puts out music a little bit differently than American music, right? While American artists will put out an album and promote that album for maybe a year or so. Mm. Korean people put out a mini album, promote it for maybe two months. Mm. They'll go ghost for a month and then be back with three new songs. Right. So it's like you can always expect more. So sometimes, but then you have some groups, <clears throat> a YG, that kind of keep people trapped in a basement so we don't get <laughs> music as frequently. YG locked them up and swallowed the key. Right. But I can. But then we have other labels and not just. Other artists in general, period, right. that put out more music more frequently. But then sometimes I can appreciate some of them waiting to put out music because then you get better content and more content from right. them when they do release. Like, Epic High doesn't release all the time, but they're not, and they're not as controlled by YG as some people may think because when they came into YG, they were already established. Right. So, and I think he said in an interview that he doesn't, he doesn't have any control over how they do their music and how they put out their music. Who, Epic High? Yeah. Oh, okay. So... I think they're getting ready for, I think I saw Tableau saying they're working on new music. I don't know when it will come out, though. I was excited, though, for when we went to their concert, not last summer, but the summer before. God, is it that long ago? It seems so far away. Yeah, because last summer we went to J. Cole concert. Oh, sorry. No, it was the same summer. Oh, it was. The same summer, Epic High was first, and then J. Cole. Wow. Right, so. Dang, we didn't do nothing last summer then. Nope. <laughs> Epic High's concert. I was so excited because they were my first quote unquote K pop concert. Right. And that's what um, Tableau had said to. Right. He like, said at the K pop. He said it was K pop at the concert. But I think he was just probably saying that because they're in America. And right. And they just trying to generalize. A big so generalization of it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I had fun. Still got my light stick. I hit that on button every once in a while <laughs> to see if it still works. Turn the lights off. Woo! I feel like I'm still there. Right. I still got my sign that I have. Right. But I guess anything new that I'm listening to other than Zion T is G2. He has a new um, EP out. I don't know. Is it an EP or mini album? Either way, I only have one song on it off of that album. And I like it. Um, he has a couple features on it, too. People like uh, the song that I have that actually has a feature of two west coast rappers korean american west coast rappers oh, really? one is dumbfounded and dumbfounded is amazing right and i wanted to go to his concert that was going to be here in february but i missed it and it was just like and what i love about out. dumbfounded is he's he's was he born in the states or he, yeah he was born i believe he was born in the states granted i don't know his whole background this right is me assuming. i know he still states. lives in the states but he still goes to korea to promote and do stuff every once mm-hmm. in a while somewhat i think he but not as often coast. right but yeah. he stays in the states so he has probably more American fans than Korean fans because he's based here. Right. And in he doesn't California, really rap, I think he it doesn't is. rap in Korean. He raps in, in English. English. You better say American. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Speak that American. <laughs> so I listen to a few of his stuff here and there. But I guess because I'm, when I'm looking for K-pop or K-hip-hop, I'm looking for more non-English ones. Right. So, <clears throat> um, but then we have... The new group, a new co-ed group, mm. Card. They're, it's kind of, 
it, they're a kind of phenomenon in a sense almost in K-pop land now because they have that reggae vibe to the two songs that they've come out, but they're also big hits internationally. I've never heard of them. I've seen like articles about them, but I've never went back and listened to them. Okay, well, Card is a co-ed group that has two boys and two girls. Um, Big Matthew, J-Pep, Jiwoo, and I forgot the other girl's name. So they're American. No, Big Matthew was, I think he was born and raised in California, I think, or he was raised in California. I don't know the full story. <laughs> I haven't done the full Wikipedia search on them. This is kind of what I based off on the snippets of stuff I've heard here and there. Mm. Um, so he speaks very good English, so that's why I'm assuming that he was, I know he's raised here, but I don't know if he was born here. Right. Um, I think Jiwoo, I think she's a blonde girl. I think she speaks a little bit of English. The other two, I don't think so much. Right. Because they actually just released the hidden version of their second digital single, mm -hmm. which is, I didn't realize until I was watching the video the second time, is a, the English version of the song. Oh. Um, Jay Pep, I think that's how he says the name. Excuse me if I'm not saying it right. Um, he doesn't rap in that version of the song because I'm guessing he's not perversed well enough in English to uh, do it. That's always funny, though. Like, when you watch or you, you listen to something and you know it's supposed to be K-pop or K-hip-hop, but it's really English, and you read the subtitles or something, you're just like, oh, it's English. Right. I did not know that. Right, because <laughs> I watched the video while I was at work, so the volume was a little lower the first time. So when I watched it the second time while I was at home, I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding some stuff. <laughs> I don't need subtitles. Oh, my career right. is getting so much better. Right. And Psych. I'm like, nope, no, you're not. And so I was like, oh. And that's what I can appreciate about them because they're a co-ed group, which is not very popular in right. K-pop. They don't do that a lot. There's one other co-ed group I remember of. I don't remember their name. I'm just really bad with names and like that kind of stuff. But I remember they were co-ed. But maybe it was just a mix. Group. Yeah, there's never been a, like an, at least not to my knowledge, an actual co-ed group from the jump. And not a subgroup or pulling members right. from They're another group. Right, like a subgroup or something from a label. Right. Co like, Card is, and I don't think, because there's two singles, I don't think this is technically considered an official debut. This is like their pre-debut. Oh. Because it's just digital singles they've been releasing, and they're supposed to have, like, it, they're called Card, and it's based off the deck of cards. Yeah. And they're supposed to have hidden card members. They had. Is it gonna be like NCTU or whatever NCT? I don't. Where they have think. like pulling people out the woodwork. Oh, he's in the group <laughs> now. He's in the group. Oh, no, him too. I don't think so. They because their first single had a feature from. What is her name? I forget her name. She was in. She was in a drama in the group Kara that's kind of disbanded at the moment. Even mm. though she says they're technically not. <laughs> She said they're not, but according to news outlets that they released months ago that they have disbanded, the mem the members are kind of going their own separate ways. Yeah. I think Young G, I think her name is, she was in another drama. Why is it not coming to my mind right now? I can't remember. <laughs> she was in a drama last spring, and so she was she had a little mini part at the end, near the end of their, their first digital single. Mm -hmm. So they're a new group, I would say, for at least international fans especially, to look out for. They do... Quite a, they kind of like to interact with their international fans, I think. Right. And I think mainly because of Big Matthew, it helps them kind of stay connected to us. Right. So I'm all for groups. Not <laughs> saying other groups don't interact with us internationally, but it's not always guaranteed, and they don't do it all the time. Right. So what were your three, your top three K-pop groups? K-pop only. My oh. Big Bang. <sighs> 21. Disbanded. Ugh, fuck you, YG. Excuse my language. Um, third one is hard. Yeah. Because I have groups that I pay attention to here and there. But you wouldn't say you're like, they're top, they're not top three material. Right. Um, <laughs> well, for me, I'd say Big Bang. Granted, I probably have to put them at number two just because... I feel like they haven't put out as much stuff as some of the other groups that I really like. I still love them. They're my kings. But Big Bang is probably number two. Number one, Shiny. Of course. Right, Shiny. I've been a fan, not since day one, of course, but um, for a long time. And I really love them. Like, we have different tastes in the groups that we like. Yeah. We have similar, like, Big Bang and 
a lot of the artists from YG are the ones that we like together, but she likes a lot of artists from other labels. I right. kind of t- mainly stick to YG artists. Yeah, so I've got Shiny, Big Bang, and EXO. Ah. See, I did it at first. I was determined not to like I was determined not to like EXO, too, because when I saw them, I was like, that is too many members. (laughs) Ah. The only other group that did that was Super Junior, and I didn't get into them quite, because by the time I got into them, they were like the big, you know, the big stars, and I was just like, I don't feel like getting into too many members. Right. So I always had this notion in my mind, I would never like a band that's got too many Many members. members. It's like, what's the point? How can so many people make one song? But when EXO came out, after their first couple singles or whatever um, comebacks, I was like, mm, okay, let me listen to them. And I heard them, and I was like, oh, my God. Why? What is you, this? Why did I deny you? <laughs> oh, my God. I need more. All right. EXO is so much more than what I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be the typical K-pop boy band that every girl screams over. Yeah. Not to say that no, not all the other groups are not talented, but the the... The vocal talent and the dance talent that comes from this group alone, right, right, is definitely awesome. I mean, you can say there's other groups that have a vocal talent, but you can't say they have both. Right, it's very rare to find a group that has both vocal and dance talent. Right, even though through Equally. all the controversy, they still put out really good stuff. Right, they have lost how many members at this point? Almost all their Chinese members. Right. I think Lei is the only Chinese member left. Yeah, he is. So the group has kind of dwindled down, but their fan base is still just as huge. And right. they deserve it because, minus the controversy, they have been through quite a bit. These go- boys have trained very hard right. to be in this group. And they're <laughs> all expanding in their own stuff, doing a little acting here and there. Mm-hmm. These are a very, very talented group of boys. I'm glad that they're getting... The members that weren't getting recognized before are getting known now. Zoom in, I love you. Which I find a little, <clears throat> excuse me, which I find a little frustrating is that if you go into a group knowing that they have 12, 12 members, 12, don't dishearten or dislike certain members just because you're not into them or they're not your bias. Right. They all make this group together. Mm. So that's a little frustrating and I hate that because I've noticed that with other groups too, like with BAP. Mm. Some of, was it Heacham I think it is? I kind of like BAP but I don't fully remember all the members' names. I've seen posts that go on about how this member doesn't deserve to be in a group. I've seen that about Dara, even for 21, that, oh, she's not talented enough or she doesn't. And I'm like, um, guys, could you go through the same rigorous training that they did and still be in the group? Mm. You probably get fur- cut for sleeve before <laughs> anything happens. You suck. Get out. Right. So I feel like if the label was able to take a chance on these members, then you should too. Right. Don't say any member doesn't deserve to be in a group. Unless they're ungrateful. That's a whole different issue. Right. But don't say they're not deserving to be in a group because you don't feel like their talent is good enough. Right. Don't do that. <clears throat> because one, the other members of the group don't are not going to appreciate that. And they're not going to appreciate you as a fan that way either. Right. I feel like fans need to think about this thing. Don't hate on a certain part of the group and expect the other part of the group to still go along with it. <sighs> no, they're in this together. <laughs> we are one. Right. But uh, other than those three, I definitely want H, uh, not H, was it CTU? NCTU. NCTU. Right. Why, what? SM, SM, please tell me why. Dream. Why? Why? <laughs> Dream came out. Why? Like- Dream and, and 127 has had how many comebacks? NCTU had that one song, and we have not seen or heard from right. them since. Like that? NCTU was like the group that got everybody into NCTU. Right. When they came out, because. I'm not a big SM fan because their groups tend to be more poppy for my than my taste. Yeah, other than Shiny to me, they right. feel more R and B. Right, not to say that the the groups are bad. I think so. Right, but I tend to like more R and B sounding groups than poppy groups. Right. So when I heard NCTU, I was like, Oh snap! SM is expensive. <laughs> Go ahead. But then you had 127 come in. I was like, what Was that fire truck? Right. And I was like, hmm, I don't know. Okay, so NC... And then you had Dream come out, and I was like, okay, they're definitely not for my age group, because they're, I think, not even 17 is the oldest member, I don't think. Yeah, I think Mark is the oldest member. He's either 17 or 18. Right. So I was like, okay, you're not for me. But I'm like, when is NCTU going to come out? Right. So NCTU came out, and then Dream came out, and I'm not going to lie, that little hoverboard thing that they did, that that, um, comeback they did, I was like, oh, shit. I oh, haven't even watched it. It is amazing. Granted, I don't care for the song. I wouldn't just like download the song. Right. And be like, oh, this is my jam. 
that that performance was lit, so to speak, because 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 they were on hoverboards and they were like <laughs> hopping off and hopping back on. Tell me if you can do that. People can't even ride a hoverboard. Who right. can ride a skateboard? I'm clumsy enough. I know I'm not gonna be able to do no food since that like that. That was amazing. I have to give it to, up for uh, SM for that one though, because that right. was pretty dope. But other than that, I'm not really into Dream or 127. Fire Truck was not where it was at. Right, like the beat for the song was nice, but the song on a yeah. whole, I and really didn't had, care for. They had another release. I can't remember the name of the song, and I watched the video, and it felt like, I think it was 127, where they were like in some kind of warehouse, and they were running. They're always running in a video. <laughs> What's this? Who are you running from? from? Who's running after you? Right. But they were running in something. They were dancing, too, of course. And that video was pretty cool, and the song was nice, but it wasn't the level of NCTU to me. Right. And that's what I've been looking for. Where is that group? They right, they bring pulled that... members from NCTU to right. be in 127, but NCTU have not had a comeback and I think since their NC... first song. NCTU is the oldest of the subgroup. Which... And then there's NCT127. Uh, and, and then, then Dream is the youngest. Because you can just tell they have really baby faces. Some of them are like 13 or something. Right. You look like, like, um, do you need a snack? You want an apple juice? Because <laughs> that's how some of them look, for real. And I guess that's the concept, which I'm not hating. I just know they're not gearing for me as a fan. Right. Because... And I think they're gearing towards, like, a lot of K-pop industry or K-pop labels are gearing towards the younger groups now because as they get older, the boy groups, they have to go off to military leave. So I right. guess they're trying to keep them as long as they can. Which is fine. And then mold them into exactly what they want or what they've envisioned for this group. Which is fine, but you've got the... Because you've got so many people leaving now, especially with this year, because you got... Because what year is Top born? Top was 87. So basically all the 87ers who have not done their military service have to do their military service by this year. Right. And I vote for people to do it earlier because people like uh, Kwang Su from Running Man, he did his early. And so at one point when I was watching Running Man... I was just like, wait a minute, how old is he? Right, he shouldn't be leaving? Right. But, but he's done his already. Right, and that I think that helps a fan base, too. You don't, granted, we do cheer for them when they're off on their military leave. Right. It's still better for us to just keep them where we would, would like, like them to, to right, be. Right, right. Which is in front of us, in the TV, or on the, you know, on the stage. Because I've noticed even a lot of the younger Korean actors yeah, they're are doing, doing it. it. Like the little brother from Boys Over Flowers just returned from his military leave. Yeah, I saw lead. that. Um, uh, the male lead that was in Remem- I Remember You, he was also in I Miss You. Yeah. He was the second lead in I Miss You. He returned last year, and he's one of the younger. He's a child star that grew up and right. went. So, and I think the child stars are realizing that they should do it then. Early because, on. Right, because once you hit that late 20s early 30s mark that's kind of like your peak to really get stuff in and right. so you really don't want to have to go those, anywhere right you miss those kind of important years because you're doing military leave. right and granted it's not that long it was it 18 months 18 21 months 21 months 21 months that's a long time that's almost two years right so for them to be gone that long it's just like people who just discovered you are people who might have been a fan right before you became you had to go on your military leave they kind of forget about you. I right. Mean, and then when you come back, you're like, oh, yeah. And then you finally have a drama. Granted, you can always gain those and more fans. It's just better, I feel, for the longtime fans. Right. When they don't have to see you go off for so long. long. And then you come back. Right. But that's just their Because that's happened with me with Lee Jung Ki. I watched his one of his earlier dramas, Il Jermay, And I was, after I finished, I was like, oh, I want to watch what he's been in next. I went to look him up and realized he was on military leave. And I was like, oh, man, that means there's not going to be. And I think he had like another year and a half left yeah. before he returned. But I will say that, though, when he did come back, I was like, oh, yes, he's finally back. And I watched the first drama that he came back. And ever since then, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've been in love with Lee Jun Ki. So it's it's good and bad times for when they're leaving. Right. But That's probably why they're just doing the younger guys. And then, to a lot of. I think a lot of their products are their merchandise sell to the younger crowd. Right. So you always have the young crowd at, you know, at the concerts with the light sticks yelling and stuff. Granted, right. there's older, you know, fans too, right. always. Right. But the younger crowd, I think they, they gear towards them because it's an easier market for them to get right. attention from. 
when you have the older market, we have more responsibilities. We may not always be able to go. Right, you can always count. Issues. Right, you can count on them for views, but actually purchasing merchandise, merchandise. I think they geared towards the younger ones because Cause the younger ones are allowance money, ask mom for money. Right. So older crowds, they got bills to pay, got to take <laughs> care of kids. Accidents may happen, can't afford to go. Right. So, because I know what last year, CL had her tour here, and I wanted to go, but. Adult issues happened, couldn't afford right. a ticket. So right. it's stuff like that. So, but I also wish that labels wouldn't forget the older fans. Right. Don't forget that we are here too. Yes, we may have adult issues that come up here and there, but we're still here supporting you. Right. Don't forget us. So I think that's why we appreciate the older fans more like NCTU, even though they're not right. that much younger than us. You know, considerably younger. They're still younger than us, but they gave off a more of a mature feel Vibe. with their song. And I, Winner, Winner did that when right. they Winner's debut was a mature debut for a new group. Right, and people were like, "That doesn't look like a rookie group." And, that, and that's what I loved. And I guess you could say Winner is probably a third group I like. Yeah, Winner's is definitely on my list, my top right. five list. Right, they're even def- though they're. <sighs> We won't even get into that anyway. That's a whole nother podcast to talk right. about that. But yes, there, there's there's a lot of groups out there like Shiny and Winter that don't do the typical boy band stuff that you get. Yeah. Because I think even, I feel like even when Shiny started off, their older stuff wasn't necessarily super what poppy. What yeah, their most first gr- song like Ring a Ding Dong and um, something from their, their, one of their first, first albums. They were more poppy. And stuff, but as they matured, I think the label realized their abilities to do right. like certain slow ballads. The and members stuff. of Shiny, their vocal range and the vo- I love the I variety the, there. Right, is really good. both Winter and Shiny have that. They, yeah. their vocal range of their members are very different, mm. so that it's kind of distinction that you can tell if someone's missing. Yeah, because it it throws off the vibe of the group. So that's another thing we were talking about now with Taehan gone from winter. How would they flow out their sound now? Because Taehan was a falsetto and granted Jiwoo can, Jiwoo can do falsetto, but, but it he's sounds a different. different level than Taehan. Right. So I guess Jiwoo will do the more falsetto sets of the song because Right. Look at the rappers. Minnow does, but Minnow's more of a low. He does that like a right. baritone kind of talking, right. singing thing. He does the, the how Top does his singing right. with the Top right. singing. Whew. Thank you for that Top. Right, thank you. <laughs> oh wait, wait, thank you for that G Dragon. Because I remember in the interview he was like, he told him everybody's gonna be singing on this song. And Top's just like, oh well, up, uh, not me. Goodbye. No, come nope. back, Top. <laughs> Sit down. You're gonna sing and Thanks. you're gonna sing first. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yeah, but, I mean, I'm looking forward to whatever new comes out of K-pop this year. Yeah, granted, there's a lot of girl groups. We haven't talked about girl groups other than 21. And I don't, nothing against them, because girl power all the way. I yes. love to see a girl power. Please, I just stay in girl groups. Please stay in girl I groups. I haven't got into any girl groups, really. I, it's harder for me to get in girl groups, because a lot of times, girl, group, girl groups do a lot of the same type of concept. Right. They're very cutesy, very poppy. Or they go for the sexy vibe, and I'm just like, okay, you're right. pretty, you have a nice body, can we do something Right, else? that's why I appreciated 21, because they didn't do either vibes. Right. They had their own woman power vibe. Right. I like Sistar, because they, but they do that sexy vibe, right? And I, I look forward to Sistar. Yo, you guys always have to drop that summer single, right? I look forward to Sistar for the summer single, the dance single, the mm. sexy vibe songs. Um, I like Girls Day, which is surprisingly because they're a little bit more poppier than my usual taste, mm. but I like their sound for some reason. Mm. And then I also think the them being on variety circuits and dramas have got me into that group as well. Right. I think that definitely helps. Um. Somebody told me to about Red Velvet, and they're like, oh, Red Velvet's awesome. And I haven't really got into them, but I feel like I should sit down because I am a SM stan. Honestly, I am, because I like majority of what they put out. Right. I really not have not sat down and got into Red Velvet. Like, I feel like I should. Right. So there's Red Velvet, and then I heard G-Friend is amazing. Like, they... Like, legit dance. You know how some girl groups are just, like, you know, doing the moves and, and all that kind of right. stuff in heels or some kind of wedge sneaker? I heard that G-Friend, like, really gets down Right, I've only dances. watched one one or two of their performances or videos, excuse me, and I like them, but 
usually for newer groups, you gotta, I don't know. I slightly pay attention to you, but sometimes I need, I need that one song that really pulls me right. in. Right. G Friend hasn't quite had that one song to pull me in. I do slightly pay attention to them here and there, but not fully. And a lot of times, a lot of the girl groups that I've actually kind of paid attention to actually don't go very far, or yeah, right? they don't promote as often. There is one girl group. What is their D something D unit? Oh, I love they barely did anything. Barely did anything. I don't even know what happened to them. I'm like, please. They probably disbanded, probably. or was it a was it a like a subunit? Of no, groups? they were a group and. They promoted it for a while, then they added a member, and they said they were kind of going to go through that, where they each adding members. But after they, they added that, that kind of right, after they added the last member, and they did that song, I haven't heard anything from D. I think you should them. look them up. They probably disbanded. More than likely, they disbanded. A lot of girl groups disband pretty quickly. I'm not sure Right, because how many girl groups disbanded last year? Because we had Kara, Jewelry. Kara's been around for Rainbow. a while. Rainbow. And I think because some of the girls were leaving, uh... They were just like, all right, guys, we're just going to let this go. Right. And honestly, I didn't realize Cara had went through that many member changes until I looked them up. Right. Because I thought that the members that I have known for were the original they members. They added members and then members left, too. Right. So, and then um, Girls' Generation's going through something. Like, weren't they, like, as big as Super Junior, as many members? They were, but they've only lost Jessica. Oh. But, I thought more members left. Well, they do a um, lot of solo. Granted, acts. I don't pay attention to girls' generation like that either yeah, because they're okay. I feel like a lot of times when you hear K-pop, everybody, oh, you like girls' generation? I guess because they were so popular. No, like I the, really don't. The whole Hollow Wave, they were right after that with Super true. Junior because they were Very like true. Super Junior, the big group, and then they had the girl version of them, which is the girls' generation, right? Which I don't knock girls' generation for, but they're like, like you, like we said earlier. You got too many members. I can't really get into you. <laughs> and then your girl group, too, just for me at least. And then your girl group, Your too. girl group, you got hella members, and then your, your music doesn't necessarily catch my attention because right. it's too poppy. So I never paid attention to them. I kind of paid attention more to the members when it comes to their acting aspects than the actual group music. Right. And then I liked Orange Caramel. Granted, I've only had listened to a couple of their songs. I actually like their, their vibe, you know, the vibe that they give off. And they're me. a subgroup from after school, I think. Are they? See, in the after school, did you disband it? I think some of the members graduated in yeah, a sense. Graduated, but I don't know. Quote unquote. But I don't know if that group's going to promote anymore because right. they haven't had our music in years. I think they disbanded. Well, don't quote us on this because we're just, this is speculation. Of right, this is based off we, international fans can get information on. Right, and information that we, do, we know because we don't really follow these groups like that. We just, right. This is what we hear here and there, and this is fact from memory. But Orange Caramel. I never listened to After School, and they were way before, I guess, I really got into K-pop After like School, that. I've only paid attention to whatever may, Pandora may play. Right. So, mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those groups, too, that, I don't know, I feel like girl groups just need, labels need to pay attention to girl groups, period. Yeah. In general, I feel like a lot of labels, it's SM just, may be the only one I feel like that wholeheartedly has more, a lot more. Um, equal amount of girl groups as they do boy groups. And I think, too, I read this somewhere that boy groups are easier to promote. Which I find odd because that's like, they may be easy to promote, yes, but then you guys have to deal with the impending military leave. Right. So I feel like girl groups, you don't have to worry about that. So it should be easier to get them. Granted, I guess by the time girl groups get at the age where most guys are going to military leave is when girls are getting married and having kids. Mm. But that shouldn't stop them from still being able to promote because there's plenty of artists that take breaks, go have kids, have family, come What's back. What's that group, uh, SES or whatever, that's come back? The oh, girl Shaq, from... right. Yeah. They, they, uh, they technically said they disbanded, but it's... There's only three members in the group all together anyway. Right. I, can, I guess whenever a group decides to go their own separate way, they call it disbanding, but they kind of just grew up and went about their lives. Right. And Acting they're coming back and now. And family. Right. Yeah. And they're coming back now and promoting stuff. And... They're gaining newer fans now. And I feel like it's it's always after that certain point of military leave. And I feel like it's a military leave for women, too. Right. Like, after that time, they just don't promote anymore. Unlike the groups that are coming back. Was it Sex Keys? It's, it sounds like Sex Keys. Right. But I think it's Sex Keys or something like that. Ha- you guys know who we're talking about. If you fo- know K-pop. You right. Know what, they came back. And then what's the other group that came back, too? There's another older guy group that's kind of like doing stuff here and there. And um. I feel like... After everybody's on their military leave and whatever, I guess, else they wanted to dabble in, they kind of come back and they're like, we still want to do this. We right. Eric Moon's back. group. What is it? Uh, I forget. Is it Sex Keys? No, he's not in Sex Keys. He's in... Hold on. I got to look it up because I know I have their songs. 
Right. So, and see, but th- these are just groups that we don't follow like that. We just hear more about them. We're like, oh, okay. They're like, the oldies are the legends in the K-pop world. Right. That, you know, you just have Shinwa, to Shinwa, that's what it is. Shinwa, Shinwa. Right. They're coming back, too. So, they're still doing it. And they never disbanded. They just kind of put their stuff on a hold. hold to because, go do other stuff. And then their military leaves, so. Because a lot of times with boy groups, there's a range of ages right like for big bang top just left as the oldest member but sung Ri is the youngest and he has years before he technically has right. to go and i really wish they would just all go at the same time so they come back at the same time hint yg send them all at the same time <laughs> but it may not happen that way so for us vips that means how many all years before we get all five members again? Right, that's gonna be years down the road. So There's gonna for, be another. Um, so imagine, it, or right? So imagine if XO didn't lose oh. members. That's twelve members they have to deal with leaving for military. <laughs> but they're all around the same age, though. But you know, they probably went all left at the same time. Yeah. I and I kind of wish like top is old as yes, so. Maybe G Dragon and Taeyong could go at the same time, and then well, they're they, born the same year, just a couple of months apart. Right, but they might not necessarily go at the same time. They have to go eventually, but right, and then they sung and sung Rika at the same time because that that could cut down the years a little bit. Right, but that's the thing; these are just speculations as fans would like to hope. Right, the members themselves may have own decisions about when they want to enlist. Mm. So, and we can't pressure them just because we want them to come back to us faster to go ahead. Because I'm pretty sure people like G-Dragon's like, I really don't want to do this, but I have to. It's just part of, you it's, know. It's something that every man from South Korea, unless unable to, have to do. Right. Which I'm all for. It's something that I feel like gives them more pride in their country by doing that. Mm. So, because it's a big controversy for when anybody tries to not do it or escape it. Yeah. So... I'm not for telling them not to go. Please do your service. Do your yeah. duty. It's part of what you have to do for as your countrymen. But as for us, as international fans or fans in general. Right, who don't really understand that whole concept of going off. Everybody having to be trained military-wise. Right. It's just like, it's foreign to us. Why? You know, people here, they decide to go in the military because they want to. Right. And they want to make a, either make a career out of it or they... They need the benefit. Right, the benefits for college or whatever it may be. Right, right. So, and even to have that on your resume, that's amazing. But everybody there, every man, every able man, healthy able man does it over there. So, you can't really put that on your uh, resume. They're like, okay. I did it too. Right, so? (laughs) Right. So, it's something that they all have to do, so... I'm all for it. I'll be ready and waiting for when Top comes back. I know. I need to do a countdown. And Nacelle's going to do a countdown. Maybe I have to look at how many days because I'm right. not very good at math. But I have to calculate exactly how many days, how many I hours. I just know it's 2018. No, 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 2019. Oh, stop saying that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so many days to calculate. 365 plus what, maybe, two, maybe it's two, three, two, two years if you calculate it all together. Right, because it's. I mean, when you look it up, it says technically 21 months. But when it comes down to it, by the time they actually may come back into. Right, because it's not like they. Come back into society for fans. Right. Might be two years. Right. They may come back for family members before that. But for us, as fans to see them actually promoting and doing stuff, it might actually right. be about two years by the time they come back. I want him to come out with another single right when he comes out. Right, because we know when he comes back, by the time he comes back, at least one of the other members will have been gone already. Right. Or right. are getting ready to go. They have to be gone by then because G-Dragon's Oh, right. They're Ameri- not that far apart right. in age. So, yeah. By American-wise, time- he's he'll be, in two years, he'll be already be 30. So, he probably should be gone by now. He's 28 now. Yeah. So, by the time Top is coming back, Young and G-Dragon, either one or both may have been yeah, gone. Yeah, probably. So, and that's what I love about Big Bang is I know that they can promote soloists. Right. So hopefully he will give us something when he comes back. Because right. we got a Big Bang before he left. So hopefully we can get him when he comes back. Yeah. Um, Back to girl groups, though. <sighs> Mama Moo had a lovely controversy over last week that I... I kind of slightly pay attention to Mama Moo because of their sound. Yes, the amazing voices. Every one of them have... Amazing voices. ...have a... St- Stellar singing voice, and they're always on. Um, what's that show? Yo, sketchbook. Yeah, not that one. The one where they do like a competition. They sing older songs. Uh, immortal song. Immortal, yeah, immortal song. So I'm guessing they sing songs that 
has spanned generations and right. they're just that good. You know, or they do their own version of some kind of song. And they're amazing on there. Right. So they had a controversy where they did, I get, not want to say a parody or a remake of one of Bruno Mars' songs. What song was it, though? I don't remember what song it was. It's one of his recent tracks. Mm. And they're blackface in the video. Mm. I didn't watch the clip. I saw the article that Sompi posted with a screenshot of the video right. of them painted brown. Right. They pissed off international fans. I was shocked and surprised. I'm like, Mamamoo, no. <laughs> I stand you. No. So I don't, I've, I've got to go see this now because I'm trying to figure out what song they could right. did that they needed to be blackface Right. For. They apologized for it themselves. The record label, Mamamoo, apologized themselves. But my thing is I feel like people try to use the excuse, oh, they're from another country. They don't know. But my thing is I look at it like this. You know you have international fans. Right. I feel like you need to pay attention a little bit more stuff before you do stuff coming from taking it from another country. Yeah. Just because you're doing a Bruno Mars songs, why did you feel the need that you need to paint your skin brown? Right. There's plenty of other artists that can do remakes and do other songs without having to feel like they need to look like the person exactly. Right. Pay a homage were to Were they the... supposed to be looking like Bruno Mars or brown skin? They were dressed up like men. So oh. I didn't, that's like, like I said, I didn't see the video clip or whatever it was played before one of their concerts or something like that. Mm. Granted, after that day, they took it down and didn't play it again. But this seems to be happening quite frequently in the K-pop, K-hip-hop culture in the past, what, two years? Where a lot of artists are getting controversy with international fans for doing stuff like that. And it's like, guys... I feel like, especially if you're, especially for those who care hip hop artists, mm. you like this culture. You need to know what is respectable and what's not respectable in this culture. Right? Don't blackface. Don't culture appropriate. And as much as I love Big Bang, the one thing I cannot stand is the hair. Yeah. Tae Young and D Dragon. I think even Top at one point had a little bit of a kind of trying to dread his hair a little bit. As much as I love them, that's the one thing I cannot take because. Me as a black girl with natural hair, we are ridiculed so hard for our hair on a regular basis. So Can for the, I touch it? No. Did you wash your hands? <laughs> so for it's like you can do the music, you can quote unquote turk and dance and have grills in your mouth and do whatever. But I feel like you I draw the line at the hair. Yeah. Do not copy the hair because that's no. No, it's just a no for me. There's yeah. no other way around it. Like G Dragon, it was a one of a kind video with the yellow dread. Right. When I saw that, I was like, G Dragon, what the fuck? <laughs> Who told you that was okay? That is a negative. First off, it looked terrible. It looked bad, and that's the thing. I mean, like, our the style that a lot of them do is what we do that works for our hair. Protective styling for coarse curly hair, not for slick straight hair. Yeah. So you're doing like that. It's going to look a little weird and ridiculous on you. <laughs> Two, it's probably going to take more work because your hair texture is not made for that type of hairstyle. Yeah. And with Young, he liked, I remember distinctly in a video, they were like, G-Jack was like, when Young likes something, he likes it for a long time. So he will keep that hairstyle for a long, long time. time. He had mohawk for, I don't, how many years did he have this mohawk? <laughs> Everybody else changed their hair, got a haircut, color. It's cropped everything. Tell Everybody's with, still. He's he's had he's changed it from blonde, but he's had the mohawk. Yeah, he had the whole like wet slip back look. The wet look to young. I'm glad you let that go, but I don't like the dreads. But honestly, and fuck and fuck it, I did like the dreads. I don't mind the the locks on certain people if it looks all right because right. it's become more less of a cultural thing, more just a fashion thing. Right. Because the original Rastafarians, that's how they wore it for religious reasons. But as a style, I can appreciate it on certain people. Not everybody right. looks right because, especially those who have to wash their hair more frequently, it doesn't appear like a dredge. It seems really matted. Right. Instead of a style, which is really what you're going for. Instead right. of a religious uh, Right. And I feel value. like this day and age, especially with everything that's happening in America, in North America especially, that, excuse me, black international fans of Cape excuse me, of K-pop and K-hip-hop are a little bit more critical about stuff like this. Yeah. So I feel like there's certain things I guess I can appreciate from a style standpoint. I can appreciate it. But me as coming from a black woman who has to deal with this type of stuff, I'm not really appreciated of it. I did not, as you can tell, I still love Big Bang. I'm not going to not dishearten them from that. But 
it does kind of limit my love a little bit for them because yeah. of this. But I feel like this is uh, vice versa or a, a two way road. True. We have to we have to respect their culture and what right. they know and what they don't know, as well as I feel like because they've gotten so big outside of their country or outside of Asia, they have to understand that there are fans that they also have to respect. Right. So I guess I can appreciate Mamamoo for apologizing to international fans. Right. But I would like for K-pop artists and K-hip-hop artists going further into the future to be a little bit more critical and take that extra step Mm. to make sure that they're not going to have to go through that process of having to apologize to international fans for doing something like that. Mm. It doesn't hurt because, I mean, like, you have to have a PR person or something like that. And I feel like with so much stuff on the internet these days... They were like, um, I don't think we should go with that concept. Right. How about we try something else? Right. I wish someone would say something like that. Like, somebody be in their ear to be like, let's rethink this a little bit. Mm. So, please, I mean, I'm not going to dishearten my move fans. It is what it is. I can't say that this will help me become a fan of Mamu. I still like them as a mm. group, but it does kind of push me a little back about them a little bit. Right. So, um, I think that might be it for this podcast. Yep. Um, I don't know when the next one will be. Mm. Who knows? Maybe next week we'll talk about Whatever happens within this week, because a lot can happen with a week in, within K drama land and K pop world. Right, right, right. So who knows? It may be a week from now, two weeks from now. We never know. I don't even know how long this is gonna be because we didn't set a timer. <laughs> so hopefully this is not too long. Um, leave your comments down below. Hit that like button. Don't forget to share. And actually, this can help us to know we can have a topic for the next one. Leave any questions that you would like for us to talk about, or any topics you would like for us to talk about down below. Also. And I guess we'll see you guys in the next podcast. All right. See you. Bye.